Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are continuing our playlist on 2023's external exams in Queensland for general mathematics and we are looking at paper one short response questions on financial mathematics. Let's get into finding out how you can engage further with this channel. So if you like what you see here today, why not considering liking and subscribing and hitting that notifications bell so that you'll always know when the next video is ready. Also consider super like, it costs a lot of money and time and resources to put these videos together free for you. So why not consider giving back a dollar or two to help keep this channel going? Why not tell someone? You could share it in the comments, you could tell someone on your OneNote page and share that with your class if you're a teacher, or even forward the video to somebody that you know that would be interested. You could also consider following us on Facebook and Instagram. That's a great way to stay connected as well. Well, let's get straight into our first question. Question 17 worth four marks. Jerome paid a $50,000 deposit on a house valued at $570,000 and borrowed the remainder as a reducing balance loan at 6.6% .6 per annum, compounding monthly. Determine the monthly pay repayment required to pay off the loan over 25 years. Now, I don't know about you, but whenever I see questions like this, it is a little bit overwhelming. It's a good idea to get that pen out and underline the keywords. Um, these keywords here, reducing balance loan, will help us to select the right formula. This one here, the monthly repayment is what we're trying to find. This will help us to work out um, out of the reducing balance loan uh, possibilities. We've got recurrence relations to choose from as well as an annuity formula. That will help us to pick the exact right one because we're looking for this monthly repayment. So here's the formula that we're actually going to select off our formula sheet. And we've got lots of choices on there. But remember reducing balance loan, one of the easiest ways to, is to remember that that's actually a form of an annuity. And it's got the negative power because the balance reduces over time. It takes away from itself. That's how I remember it anyway. So this one here, now the very first thing you've done now that you should do that is work out what um, Jerome actually borrowed. Jerome's already saved $50,000 for a house. They've got this house, they actually don't need to borrow the full amount of $570,000. They're only gonna borrow $520,000 because of that deposit. So this becomes our value for A, the amount borrowed. So once we've correctly determined that, we get our first of four marks. The next thing I think we should do is state some more variables. Our next variable in this one is the interest rate. Now this is where a lot of my students always forget to do the right thing because we're compounded monthly. So that means I'm gonna take this annual rate, turn it into a decimal, at the moment it's a percentage. So I'm gonna do 6.6 .6 on the calculator divided by 100 and I get my interest rate. Then I'm gonna divide that by 12, which will give me 0.0055. That is the amount that is gonna go into this part of the formula as well as that part. My final variable that I need is N. N is going to be 25 years multiplied by 12 months in one year, which gives me 300 periods altogether. That leaves me with M, which is what I'm trying to find, the monthly repayment. So let's substitute all of that into the formula. We've actually got our first, our, sorry, our second mark for getting I and N correct. So now we've substituted that into the formula. Um, A comes down here to 520, we've got M sitting over there. There's different ways that you could work this out. You could do 520,000 divided by that. It's a lot of stuff going on on a calculator to work out at one time. Um, I like to do what's in the brackets first, um, and bid mass helps me remember to do that. And then I'll divide 520,000 by the answer that the calculator comes up with. So because we've uh, um, it's substituted into the appropriate rule, we've got the formula correct, we've got our third mark. Something to note here is if I've picked the wrong formula and still continue to work things through, I'm obviously not gonna get the right answer. I'm obviously gonna lose this mark here because I haven't chosen the right rule. But if I've done everything else correctly, I can still get a possible three out of four marks. So that's worth having a go. Just pick a formula, have a go. Okay, so what I've worked out here is that everything in the brackets comes to about 146.74. The dot, dot, dot means I'm, I'm keeping that number on my calculator. I'm gonna use it again, but I don't need to um, write all of the digits on the paper to save time. So now, to undo this times, the opposite is divide. That will get M all by itself and make it the subject of this equation. So I'm on my calculator, I've got this answer here. So I'm gonna tell the calculator um, 520,000 divided by the answer, which gives me 3543.639317 and so on. Now the thing is, the question's asking me to determine the monthly repayment. I'm 
dealing with money here. So I actually need to express that with the dollar sign and round it to two decimal places because money has two decimal places. So I'm gonna round that three up to a four. The repayment is $3,543.64. And I'm going to get my final mark here for determining the monthly repayment. Because I rounded it correctly to two decimal places, I am also being awarded that mark. If I hadn't done that properly, I wouldn't be getting the mark. So be very careful to express your finance final answer correctly. Question 19, also worth four marks. Now I apologize if this is your name and I pronounce it incorrectly, but I'm gonna pronounce it as Nara. Nara compares two investment options and decides that option A is going to give the better return. So we've got option A of 5.6% per annum compounded monthly and option B of 5.62% per annum compounded quarterly. So we need to use the effective annual rate of interest formula to evaluate how reasonable her decision is. Now, in this particular case, um, they've told me what formula to use. So I just need to be able to identify that from the formula sheet. Hello, it's written there, effective annual rate of interest, and they've told you which one to use. So if you use a different formula, that would not be good. So always read your question really carefully. Okay, so what variables do we need? We need an interest rate, we need an, um, an N, this is our compounding period in here in one year. So in this case here, that will be a 12. In this case here, there's four quarters in a year, so that will be a four. The interest rate here comes down into it in decimal form. So I need to divide both of these numbers by 100 to get the decimal rate. So with the first one here, I'm just gonna put these into a little table so I can compare. So I'm stating my variables here, 0 0.056 n equals 12. Now one of the most common mistakes I see people making in this type of question is to divide that by 12 to get a compounded monthly rate and then they go and divide it by 12 again. Now you just need to remember the effective interest rate formula actually converts that annual rate into a monthly rate for you. You don't need to do that beforehand. So don't overthink it, don't do that twice. Just do it as the formula works it. Okay, so we're gonna substitute that into the formula and then we work that out on the calculator and we get 0 0.57. Notice that we earned our next mark here for correctly substituting into an appropriate rule. So we substitute correctly into the rule we were told to. We could get that mark for either of these options. So that's wonderful news there. And our effective rate is 0.57, blah, blah, blah. Now the thing is that interest rates should be given as a percentage. So we now need to times this by 100 to get 5.75% per annum, okay? So that's our next mark there, getting the effective interest rate for option A. Same process again for option B. So once again, I've changed my interest rate by dividing that by 100. I know that I'm going quarterly, four quarters in one year. Substitute it into the formula. I don't get a mark here because remember that mark was given for doing it into either option. So we've already done, got that mark over here. We've worked it out here times it by 100 to change it into an interest rate 5.74% per annum, we get our next mark for working out the effective interest rate of option B. Now we actually need to do the evaluation. Was NARA correct? NARA said option A is a better return. Well, they've both got a five, they've both got a seven, but this one here has a five, whereas that one has a four. So NARA is actually correct. So we need to state her decision is correct. Notice they've got the word reasonable here. So it wouldn't hurt to chuck the word reasonable in there. It's a reasonable um, decision she's made. You need to give a reason though. That's what evaluation is, is giving a reason. So it's not just enough to say Nara's decision is correct. You need to say why, because this one is bigger than that one. And that will give you your final mark for question 19. Well, that's all we have time for in this video. And in fact, that were the only finance questions in paper one for a short response. If you found that video helpful, consider those ways again that you can um, give back to the channel, maybe by liking and subscribing, sharing the video, talking about it in the comments. And if you've got any questions about anything you saw in the video today, mcclutchymass at yahoo.com is the best way to get in contact. Don't forget to jump onto our partner's website, exam-insights.com. This is your one-stop shop for all of the 2023 and previous year's exams and exam solutions. It's a wonderful free resource for students and teachers. Well, thank you so much for watching today. My name is Natalie McClutchy. Have an amazing day.